Mantic, 87.6. Uh, morning, Andrew on the radio. Always a pleasure. Matthew Dixon, let's talk some tech. Morning. Yeah, good morning to you. And definitely let's talk some tech. There's always some pretty exciting stuff to talk about in the tech world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we all see the people uh, walking down the streets. They've got their phone, their faces buried in the phones, but now Android's got a new feature that's going to help you while you walk down the street. Oh, it's, what's it come to, Andrew? When society's gotten to the point where our phone has to have a feature called Heads Up Feature to prompt users to stop staring at their phones while walking, where is the world at? Actually, there's a really oh, funny no. there's a really funny clip. If you go and search for Rick Mercer, there's a, a clip from about 12 years ago, I reckon it was, and it was a parody ad, went for about a minute, of BlackBerry or a BlackBerry helmet. It was when BlackBerry was all the go. And this little mm. parody ad had a guy in a BlackBerry helmet and he had him down staring at his BlackBerry and it, it kind of advertised BlackBerry helmet for people that can't take their eyes away from their phone. And it was a hilarious little ad and someone was walking along with their BlackBerry phone and just running into pot pants with their BlackBerry helmet on because they couldn't dare take their, their eyes away from the phone. And that was very funny and making a bit of a mockery. But it sounds like now we're at the point where we need some reminders to tell us. So reminders will pop up on your screen if you're using this particular feature that'll say things like, watch your step, stay alert, look up. I mean, these are adults we're talking to, Andrew, and we're having to tell them <laughs> to stay alert, to look where you're going. It just seems incredible to me. Uh, it, it, yeah, words escape me, Matt. Words escape me. Can I use the phrase that everyone else uses? If we need this to stop the world, I want to get hot. Like, seriously. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the Digital Wellbeing app, it's got some good features on there. It, it helps you limit how much time you've spent on certain apps and gives you a bedtime mode to remind you that you need to go to bed and it makes things less distracting on there. So it's got some good features there. It's already started rolling out to people that have got Pixel phones because Android typically rolls out to Pixel phones or uh, upgrades. Go to Pixel phones first and you'll see it on your Android soon. So you'll be able to see it on your phone soon. But Heaven help us. If this is what we need to, to not walk into people or not walk out and get hit by a car, we are in trouble. I know, right? I'll wait for the next upgrade, the bathroom. You know what I mean? Like, uh, the, you, have you peed in the last two hours? <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> you've been sitting on the toilet too long. You need to stand up. Stop looking at the screen. Piles are coming your way. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, kids and screens, big problems there. We we know this is a uh, constant, but uh, now apparently Optus has a solution for you that's uh, going to help you stop getting kids playing on your phone. Yeah, I don't mind this one. I used to have a really good solution when my kids were a lot younger and I'd be, say, school holiday time and I'd be going off to work and I could see them sitting there playing on the PlayStation or the Xbox and I'd just say, I might just take this with me to work and I'd unplug the proprietary power lead and take it off to work with me so they couldn't play for the day. So that was my solution in some scenarios. <laughs> tough call, I know, tough call, but it had to be Oh, what kind of a harsh dad of you? Like, seriously? Right. That the, is, the, like, the worst of the worst. The kids probably had already bought another power lead somewhere and they yeah. just plugged it in when I walked out the door. So I felt like I was in control, though. That was the important part. But Optus has got a new feature now called Optus Pause. And what it does is basically rather than just having something really crude like unplugging a lead or turning off your router at home, it lets you use the My Optus app on your phone, basically nuke the internet connection on every device. So it doesn't matter whether they're connected via a SIM card or connected via your Wi-Fi router, and you just do it for a pause. So you can do it for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and you don't have to think about it after that. It just automatically starts working again. So you can say to the kids, hey, you need to clean up after breakfast or clean your room or whatever it might be. I'm going to cut your internet off. No matter how you're connected, I'm going to cut it off for the next 15 minutes, get that job done, then you can keep using it again. You can be out of the house as well. So you can be talking to the kids at home and say, have you done your homework or the, the cleaning up or the vacuuming or whatever you get the kids to do? They say no. You just remotely say, right, I've just killed your internet for 30 minutes. You've got nothing to do now, so you might as well go and do mm. the jobs I want you to do. So not a bad idea. I can see Telstra and Vodafone copying this feature they've already got parental control settings but not something quite this sophisticated so i think it's a good idea yeah oh absolutely and you know there's already a 15 year old somewhere trying to circumvent it They're, they've already worked out the patch around there man they'll, they'll they'll be some proprietary cable or setting or something that'll work out you know it's a good challenge for the kids if you've got some kids that have got a slight 
tech bent about them, then you can cut mm. off the access and it's a bit of a challenge. Hey, kids, it's just been cut off for 15 minutes. If you reckon you're any good, see if you can get around it. Yeah, they, uh, they've already – you you know what? The, probably the workaround is they'll probably just turn the modem off, do a reset, and they'll turn it back on and bang it. <laughs> I've probably already discovered the workaround. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully Optus has thought about that a bit. The, the, the real test for Optus would be just to mm. walk into a high school somewhere and say, hey, we've killed your internet, uh, you know, 50 bucks for the first kid that can get connected again. And I reckon they'd have some pretty keen students there working out ways to get around it. That would be a good test for it. Oh, absolutely. Now, uh, something I've never done is I've never lost my keys, but apparently now there's a new feature from Apple. You're just not old enough yet, are you, Andrew? Wait till you get a bit older, you'll start leaving your keys oh. and your glasses and your car and all sorts of things you'll start to lose. Oh, look, I, I have the occasional, you know, I ask the wife, you know, have you seen the keys? And she turns around and goes, they're right in front of you. Like sometimes I do suffer from you know, the man-itis, but no, as for really losing my keys, like out in the street having to get new ones, I've never done that. Yeah, that's because you've got your wife looking after you, but yeah, I know, you, right? if, if you're not as lucky as Andrew, you don't have a wife to say, where are my keys, then Apple's got their Find My program, which people have used for many years to find their phone or their iPad or even their laptop, but it hasn't been used for other devices. And you've had other companies that have done something around other devices. So Tile is the best known of those. People have got little Tile devices on their key ring, in their wallet. The problem with the Tile app is, or the Tile device, is that you need to be in Bluetooth range to find it. You can see where it was last located. But then you can use the Tile network of other people that have got the Tile app on their phone to help find your device. But that's not every phone. There's only a small percentage of phones what Apple has now done is they've started to say that you can now license to other third-party providers the Find My program. So already we've seen a set of headphones come out and a key tag device come out, like the Tile key tag, but it goes into that Find My ecosystem. And the great thing about that is if you've been down the street and you've left something important down there and you've come home, oh, where's that? I can't find it. You can actually say it's been lost, and then that activates every other Find My phone anywhere in, in the region or anywhere across the world really, but it will focus in a region where it was last seen and it will use those other phones to help you find where your device is. So the market saturation for an iPhone is much better than a tile, so you'll be uh, have a much better chance of finding where that device is. So it's Apple basically jumping on the bandwagon. We're used to Apple being the innovator. In this case, they're copying what else is already out there, but I think they'll be able to do it a little bit better because they've just got so many phones out there as well. Yeah. And at the relief of every single wife who never has to hear, honey, have you seen the keys? <laughs> well, My wife hates her when I call out her name because she, she just turns around now and she goes, what have you lost now? <laughs> and it will be a bit of a race. I think partners, wives, spouses might find mm. devices quicker than Find My, but Find My is a good fallback mechanism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what someone needs to do, Matt? They need to do an app that just partners can just open it and push the app and all it just says is, open your damn eyes, it's in front of you. <laughs> well, now you put that idea out there, I'm sure someone's working on it already. I know, there's a million dollar idea for someone, it ain't me. But uh, if you do that, my wife will buy one on every device she has. <laughs> Passwords, they're a uh, big thing, and we all know people are uh, still using one, two, three, four, five, six, or password as their password, but now people are turning to their pets, Matt. They are turning to their pets, and it's not what you might think. People aren't asking their pets for passwords. If they did, they'd probably get passwords like RWF or BARK, but they're turning to their pets using their names of their pets. So this is still a bad idea. Many people will post photos on social media of their pets. Mm. Here I am with my dog, dog Rufus. And of course, then they use Rufus as a password. 15% of the population use their pet's names as part of their password. 14% use a family member's name. And these are bad ideas. What people have really got to focus on is just making up something generic. I think people are learning not to use the word password, not to use 123456, although about 6% of the population still use those combinations of, of those numbers or the word password. But we're getting better. But 
people think, oh, I'll use my pet's name because that's easy to remember. But it's pretty easy mm-hmm. to find out your pet's name and then it's pretty easy for someone who wants to attack you to steal information from you, to get into all your social media, your email, all the rest of it. Pretty easy for them to just use a trial and error, error technique rather than a brute force technique. So just be a little bit more creative with it. And I suppose the, the real bit of advice here is Whatever you do, make sure the email password you use is completely different to everything else because if people get one of your passwords and it's the same everywhere, if they get into your email, that's often a way they can use your email to reset lots of your other passwords. So make sure your email password, if nothing else, make sure your email password is different. You know why everyone's doing that, Matt? Because people are so sick of coming out. Everything needs a password now. Everything needs an account. It is so frustrating at the fact that everything needs an account. And have you noticed now that the sign-ins with Google and Facebook are kind of becoming obsolete as well? Uh, yeah. Like they're making you re-sign for stuff that you've already signed up for? Yeah, that's right. It is, it's changing constantly because there are so many cyber hackers. Can I just send a message out, Andrew? All you cyber hackers, just stop it, please. It would make life yeah. so much easier. There you go. That should solve yeah. the problem. Yeah, just go away. Just go away. Please. I, I have nothing important in my emails. You don't need to know. That's right. <laughs> I'm the most boring person in the world. Just look at my Facebook for heaven's sakes. Uh, Queensland, they've finally caught up with New South Wales. It only took them, what, a couple of years, Matt? It's not too bad for Queensland. I always used to joke when I was growing up that Queensland in uh, daylight saving time are one hour plus 20 years behind. So, it's, oh, it's, 20, it's, you're being generous, more like 30. Right. I lived there. So I can say that. So a few years behind isn't too bad. So as we know in New South Wales, we've had the Service New South Wales app. We've got our driver's license on there, other licenses we might have, boating licenses, that sort of thing on there. It's been very handy during COVID-19 to be able to have various things using that, whether it be scanning into a hospitality location or using it to get your, your dine voucher. But Queensland have come up with the idea of driver's licenses on their phones yeah. and they've just run a trial. And the trial, what? surprisingly <laughs> enough, yeah, I know, crazy, the trial was actually quite successful. People used it and found it quite handy and quite easy to use. And so now... They're considering, don't don't rush them, they're considering maybe rolling that out across the whole state where you could actually have your driver's licence on your phone. Now, I reckon we could, there's a bit of opportunity here for New South Wales government. We've already got an app, it's successful, it's working well. We could yeah. licence that to the, New South, to the Queensland government, make a few dollars, get a bit of commission out of that for licensing. Rather than Queensland go and build their own app, we could just say, yeah. use our app, we'll stick a Queensland badge on it instead of New South Wales, and away you go. We can make a few dollars out of it. Well, well I, reckon, I, reckon, I reckon I reckon there is some method in that madness. I, re- I, I don't I know don't why there isn't more conformity, conformity so, so to speak, speak across, across all states. states you know what I mean? Like, like they, 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 they all get, get together, together and they all chat. Like, like Big, Big Brother Scotty gets, gets them all in a room. They all chat. And I don't know why one doesn't turn around to the other and go, "Hey, look, I've got this great idea." Oh, you know, yeah, give, give me five, five bucks, bucks and I'll give it, it to you. you. Like, like, seriously, seriously it, it would just make, make life so much, much easier. easier. The reality I always look at, Andrew, is that we, we really don't have a big enough country, population-wise, to have so many of our processes duplicated. And, and look, this example here with driver's licence is classic. We've got car registration different in every state. So they've got all the infrastructure, all the employees, mm-hmm. all the back-end hardware that you need to run your registration for your car in New South Wales. And they replicate that in Queensland and in Victoria and all the states across the nation. That would make a lot more sense to have a federal registration of your car and a federal driver's licence. So, again, who cares about the parochialism? We can still have Queensland playing New South Wales in rugby league. You don't have to throw that out just because you've got a common driver's licence. So it makes a lot of sense, but I I don't know why. I mean, maybe, and and this is a bit of an out-there theory, Andrew, Maybe our pollies aren't that smart after all. Mm. I know it's a bit radical. 